Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to you, whether you're watching live or you're watching later. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we, you probably didn't expect to see us till next week, but we had to come <laughs> today because we could not not celebrate Computer Science Ed Week. And we are here with a very special, special guest. Um, but before we begin, if you have not seen us before, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Teresa Castro. And I am Ricardo Resinos. <laughs> and we are both Technology Toasters from Hacienda La Puente Unified. And before we begin, we always want to thank our sponsors. Thank you so much to our CTA, our HLPTA, of course, our ILC, and HLP USD, who we represent. And thank you so much for allowing us to do this every week and to provide these trainings to our teachers and teachers all over. So thank you so much. And our topic today is, of course, Computer Science Ed Week. And like we said, we have a special guest who we're about to bring in right now. Should I use right stars? Now. Should we use fireworks? Let's there. How do you like ruin my mo there you go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't All know right, what to use today. Sorry, I did not know what welcome, to use. Welcome, <laughs> uh, Jeff Hescox. Welcome, welcome. Please say hi to our audience. <laughs> hi, everyone. Thank you. What a cool intro with the little stars. And <laughs> so you're some of you know exactly who he is, and some of you are like, who is this very important person right now? So let's go ahead and go to our next slide. So uh, Jeff corrected us, actually. So uh, Jeff, can you tell them your title right now so that we can be clear? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I, I'm now the education service manager for the UC Davis C STEM Center. Um, prior to that, I was the program manager. I'm really kind of taking a focus on working closely with school districts, specifically with integrating computer science along with mathematics. So, so you are more than qualified to represent the world <laughs> computer <laughs> science ed week no pressure no pressure oh, uh, but yeah. we're so thankful <laughs> we're so thankful that you're here with us today and um before we get we want to know a little bit more about your background you know your education whatever you want to share with us and then we're gonna begin on our interview style yeah i actually want to know about this picture right here <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man <laughs> you tell, you tell. But, like <laughs> Before I, 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 I did a very good job of like expunging myself from the internet for a long time, but I've, I've been slowly introducing content. And so like at one point, that was the only thing that would show up when you Googled my name. And that's like <laughs> when I was at, I was a, I was in college and we played intramural dodgeball back when they used to call me Dr. Dodge. Um, you can, you can tell look how serious I am in that picture. And so like, for the longest time, that was the only picture, the only thing that would show up. But now it's a little bit more relative to my profession. But yeah. <laughs> For those Dodd. of you who are just just listening to our show and not viewing it, we're looking at a Getty image of um, someone playing do hardcore dodgeball. And it is Mr. Jeff Hescox. <laughs> yeah, that's, I went to school in Colorado. So it was the Boulder Daily that took a picture and. I don't know how I don't know what Getty does, but they they got the rights to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's like a legit legit picture, but I it mean, is him. So I mean, dodgeball is pretty serious. Dodgeball <laughs> two coming to a theater near you, starting <laughs> Jeff. It's from real computer science. That's what happens when you have robots? <laughs> with dodgeball, right? I mean, it all started here. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm taking notes. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So other than your um, expertise in playing dodgeball, tell us a little bit about your background in education. Yeah. So I've been in education for um, quite a, some time in different capacities. Uh, I actually didn't study to become an educator. I uh, studied business and I ended up getting my first job as an engineer for telco or um, tele telecommunications for basically AT&T. And uh, from there, I realized that uh, engineering was awesome, but um, I wanted to try something else. And I kind of went on the path to become a teacher. And that's that was probably 20, about 10 years ago. And um, I ended up getting the opportunity to go into a credentialing program through Cal State Dominguez Hills where it was also a, a master's program in curriculum and instruction. And, and at that time I was tutoring math um, and I kind of like went full circle falling in love in mathematics. What I found though, was that um, there was a high need for computer science. And when I got my position and I worked for Los Angeles Unified School District, um, I, I, 
I realize that if you don't have a computer science teacher, the whole the whole group, the whole cohort, the whole community may not have the opportunity for students. And so one day they asked if I could teach computer science, and I said, <laughs> "Sure." I mean, <laughs> you sound so certain. <laughs> I love so, it. So I didn't study computer science. Um, I was I was I was very comfortable with computers and and all that stuff. And so I said, "Sure, I'll, I'll take I'll take a swing at it." And um, what I what I found is that I was getting more engagement in my computer science class than my math class. And oh. when that started happening, I was like, "Well, why is this?" And it was kind of like going back to um, I was subbing for the the physics teachers one time, you know, uh, during my prep period, and I and I saw all these kids that were just you know giving me a hard time two years prior in algebra one, and I was like. I was like, how come you guys are just talking about slope intercept form? Like, like you guys didn't provide with me evidence of understanding that, but now you guys are using <laughs> active vocabulary. Um, so how come you guys weren't using those conversations in my class? And they were like, well, the, it, it turned out that there was a specific need to learn mathematics at that moment. And so I was oh. like, oh, so I was, I, when I was teaching in algebra mm -hmm. one, we were doing everything algorithmically and, and that was kind yes. of like a shift point for me. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, why not try to make more an integrated learning environment? You know, we don't have, have, actually have to have everything in isolation. And so yes. then I kind of like, I, I, I blurred the lines between math and computer science and robotics and data science. And so I was kind of having an integrated approach that way. And then I kind of, from there, I, I started teaming up with UC Davis because there was these robots that had... Um, they're very simple robots, but what it is is it's teaching programming, and they're specifically designed for mathematics. And I was like, man, that that covers like everything we need our students to do. So, um, that was about two and a half years ago. I left the classroom to work full time. I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Puente was like one of the first groups that I, uh, I I started working with, and it was during the pandemic, so there was a lot of like you know online training, which doesn't translate, especially when you're introducing physical computing. Uh, yes. But uh, yeah, so then now, now everything's just starting to get back to kind of like normal and I'm getting to get, um, you know, getting a chance to work with the teachers in, in person now. So yeah, That's I'm like sure you know. Of what, of my <laughs> uh, story. <laughs> No, you're good. No, I, I said, as I was listening to you, I'm sure a lot of teachers also are probably nodding their heads and going, especially our math teachers who we have quite a few math teachers who love to hang out with us. And they're like, yes, transitioning from those algorithms to actually, you know, um, teaching it in a way that's more integrated. So yeah, you're talking their love language right now, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I remember, I remember Jeff before, not that you, you were not important back then, but you're extra important right now. And I remember um, have, going through the CSTEM cohort and seeing you back then too, before you went into your position. So um, very full circle uh, for yeah, me at yeah. least. So yeah, so thank you so much. Wow, I did not know a lot of those things. Same here. That's fascinating. Did not know that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm glad that I asked. <laughs> All right, so um, everybody, before we, we truly begin, of course, we always um, try to ground us with our purpose and our objectives here. So our purpose is to celebrate Computer Science Ed Week. It's as simple as that. <laughs> That's why we're here this week instead of skipping our show this week. And our objective is to learn all about computer science with our expert, Jeff yep. Hescox, who's already begun. And we're going to be talking about some misconceptions, challenges, the future, and any insights that he has. Because, you know, this, this show came about from a conversation, a simple conversation that we were having about computer science and you could truly hear his passion for computer science. And obviously already now you can hear his knowledge base behind it. And so we would like to pick his brain so that we can use this in our instruction and also carry it to our students as well. And so our non-objective, we don't expect anyone to be experts in computer science. That is definitely not what we're doing today. And even if it was, it wouldn't happen in this short show. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't expect you to throw out anything as always. Um, just listen and enjoy and kind of um, incorporate whatever you can as always. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're in between our questions, we, we sprinkled a few uh, pictures of our kiddos um, doing some, we have some pictures of our kids doing some coding here. I think some of them are using Scratch and we have, um, there was a conference that we went through the UC Davis, um, was it? Yes, yeah, CSTEM over there. That was all the, I think we were in 
We're in San Bernardino. I don't remember where we were. To the east. That was in, uh, I think, Redlands. 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 Yes, yes, Redlands. It was. Yes. Yeah. So, and then there's some of our teachers going through training down there um, for this. I think. And I think that was also um, for Scratch as well. So, so we in our district we have um, been bringing computer science to our littles as well as our um, high schools and things like that. So we're just sprinkling some pictures in there just to celebrate ourselves too as we celebrate this week. So let's continue. We have a few more pictures, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here's a few more, and uh, yeah, we we also. Um, like Jeff talked about, we did work with computers and robots as well. So different types of robots, but different types of RoboBocli as well. And we had some uh, robot, what does it say? Lost and found for robot parts, just kind of some fun <laughs> things that we had. Because <laughs> it's true, kids always lost little parts of the robots. And um, we had some kids also present to the families and to the com community about computer science and the importance of computer science, um, not just for high school, but also for them already in elementary and that's a big role that jeff plays in our district um so let's continue ricardo oh. <laughs> I, I didn't know i put this so early <laughs> okay so i'm not going to ask you how old you are jeff and i'm definitely not going to ask ricardo how old he is because he'll probably not I am old. ever again because yeah he's pretty old um and so i, I was I, I will probably be right here right as opposed to guess. maybe being over here <laughs> we're, looking for, we're looking for literal bugs in that one on the left like, yeah, exactly. they're literally like, where's the bug? Like, where's all those ants? Right. <laughs> and for those of you listening, we're, we just have pictures of old, antiquated uh, computers. And we're sad, aging sad to ourselves say, with those. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sad to say, some of these were actually in my home, you know, so, you know. I, I thought mean, those were so Technology cool. changes so fast. Those old Macs <laughs> that you could just hold it was like. I used to have like this a, in my like classroom that. when I started teaching, by the way, just so you guys those know. Those colorful one point. Macs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff, you were talking like, about those Macs like that you it was hold. Like a challenging laptop, like it was all in one. I was like, "How did they do that?" You know, but it was like <laughs> and bulky and like, and like it was, just it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I get, I get a remember. kick of seeing the floppy disk. <laughs> and the, oh my right? god! Hey, hey I, when I was in college, that was that was it. That's what we needed, and now we can't even figure out how to get anything out of it because all of our computers don't, you know. <laughs> Read that. And I tell my daughter, and she's like, what is that? I'm like, oh, honey, you have no idea. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much. We have, we have some viewers who just popped in. So thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, so let's continue. And so what is computer science? So this, I tried to define it to Ricardo earlier, and I was unsuccessful completely. So please, Jeff, save me. What is oh, computer okay. science? So, <laughs> yeah, that question is like pretty, gen like, well, encompassing. It's like, what is math? Right. Like, yes. uh, Good well, luck. All right. I think like if you break it down in my mind, and this is just my opinion, it's 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 the study of understanding or information fused with technology and, and, and how we use and display and and automate and how we, you know, bridge the gap to like um artificial intelligence but i think <laughs> so it, 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 in my mind all right so this is what i would tell my students in class all right so like they're like what is computer science right and i'm like well put it this way so you guys are all really good at your phones right you guys are able to do wonderful things and you guys can play awesome games and you can talk to people and all that computer science is learning how to do that get behind the scenes. Um, it's, it's how do we maximize efficiency of technology and how do we prepare ourselves for the future? Um, and then it, it's funny because sometimes students won't realize that like their, their phones are computers. Um, computers are right. everywhere. Arduino boards, Raspberry Pi, all these different yes. things are like little computer so like there's no real one answer in my opinion to what computer <laughs> science is it's kind of like like what are you interested in and then run with it you know because some people but I, computer science is just programming and that's like kind of like my jam i really like programming but like some people shows. are like <laughs> some people are like well i like to build games i'm like that's also computer science you know so mm -hmm. it's like and that's why it's like it's such an important part is, is, is it's, it's a, it's a, nece, it's a nece, necessary subject in order to make sure that the next generations are, are doing better than we are. 
Um, so, mm. yeah. Oh. He's already getting deep on us, Ricardo. Okay, I, I'm giggling on the side, not because of your answers, but because my answer was so horrible compared to all the things that you said. Ricardo, did you, I, did you want to say What was your answer? Hand? I summar, you know, I summarized it as, uh, you know, as you mentioned the phone, I was like, I was like, how do we teach our students to not just be consumers, but also be creators, right? That, that's the way I, I thought, you know, it made sense to me, you know, whether, whether it be through information, automation, as you, as you mentioned, right, and so on and so on, yeah. Yeah. Teresa, tell us about your definition. Oh, be quiet. He just wants to put me on the spot. Uh, you, you know, I, I always think of it from the littles end. And I was thinking, how did I explain that to kids? And I was like, why? you know, when we talk to them about coding and we talk about the robotics, you know, why, you know, what, what, are, what, how do I explain that to them? And I just remember having that conversation with them about having the right language to be able to tell the computers to do what we want that want them to do, to be able to do things that we want them for us. And, you know, just talking, language was a big part of my definition, but of course, very, uh, small definition compared to the broad definition that the two uh, of you have provided. But um, that was a big yeah, piece for me. I like that. Um, and I, this is like one of the first things when I, when I talk about trying to like correlate it and integrate it with mathematics is that you have input and you have an output and, mm -hmm. and mathematics, we learn about functions and how do we make something predictable? Computer science is basically like organizing. You have your input, whether it's, uh, me typing on a keyboard or using a mouse or having a ultrasonic sensor, all that is having input into a computer. The computer then recognizes that input and then creates some sort of command or an output. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like, how do we, how do we, it's, and it's all about efficiency too. It's, it's like technology yeah. is going so fast. It's like, mm -hmm. how do we process faster or, or, how, how do we make the output? How do we make how do we make the users more intuitive so that they don't even have to think anymore? And so like all these great kind of like things is is it stems from computer science. Yes. Yeah. And I think like the, the key thing that I heard you say for for me in my life is automate. How can we do how can we make things create things to automate things to make them more efficient? Because that's I need that in my life, especially right now. <laughs> I need to make oh, things yeah. automatic. Oh my goodness. Okay. So uh, thank you for that definition that helps put us on the same page, especially for those who are not sure exactly what it is or how to explain it. Um, so let's go on to our next um, question, Ricardo. This is a really important one to us. What are some misconceptions about computer science? Is that to me or is that yes, to you? They're oh, to all me? to you. They're oh, all okay. to you. I'm sorry. Not that I don't oh. think Ricardo is important or has an opinion. I'm sure he'll interject it whenever he wants, but you are the expert here. So, okay. all so, these questions are for you. <laughs> so, the misconceptions that I experience from, and this is just from my own experience, is that computer science is only for select people. And unfortunately, yeah. a lot of people say that computer science is for the smart people. Um, and that's kind of like a subject that really struck me when I was in the classroom is that every student is smart, right? So smart doesn't mean that you are doing something faster or more mm. accurate and all these different things. Everyone is, is their own learner and they learn at their own pace. Computer science is in itself its own subject that has different um, rates of, of comprehension. Students... Mm -hmm. I've, I've had students from, I, I've worked in uh, high needs areas. I've worked in mm -hmm. very affluent areas. I've worked across the state. I've worked actually in Texas and in Florida and Louisiana. And the thing is, you put technology in front of a student, they will probably attack it with less fear than people of the older generations. So mm -hmm. there's... I think one of the misconceptions that I really kind of try to tackle is that computer science truly deeply is for everyone. It really is. Um, and I mean, you could get into, in my school, we were heavily, it was a heavily male dom dominated school because at our campus, there was four different high schools with, with mm -hmm. their all thematic. I worked specifically with the communications and technology school at Diego Rivera. So our thing was technology. Um, and so we had a lot more males register. Yeah. It was, it was mm -hmm. a choose. And we found that there was a, 
um, a relationship with the the performing arts. And, and so we would have, you know, 80% in my computer science class were, were boys. And we all know that, that that's definitely shouldn't, that shouldn't be the ratio. So right. those, those, unfortunately those, those people, <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a mantra and it, and it happens in math as well. It's where people say like, oh, I'm not good at math, right? Or or I'm not mm-hmm. good at computers, right? These are the things we need to like have our kids stop saying and our parents stop saying. Yes. And our principal starts. So like I've literally heard principals say, oh, I'm not good at math. I'm like, well, when you say that, like, what do you think? What do you think that the kids, like when they hear you, that you're making it okay to say that I'm bad at math mm-hmm. or I'm not good at computers. It's the same thing. Computers are a tool to elevate and and to get students to enter in the workforce. It's not even Dr. Jimenez from Hacienda La Puente. He said, um, we're not even trying to prepare for the 20, the the 21st century right now. We're we're in the now, like we're already behind. Like, so we need to, we need to be skipping a generation. Our kids are going to be doing stuff that we can't even conceive at this point. And so (laughs) if, if, if we keep thinking that, computer science is only for a certain group we're 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 doing an incredible disservice to not okay. only those kids but like our our society like our future yeah we don't have time we don't have time to only have five percent of the, the population studying mm-hmm. computer science it's, it's you know ridiculous as we were getting ready for for the show i was looking at some stats right and i was what, what you mentioned right when we talk about our female students 50 percent of california high school's populations are girls or females, but only 30% of students enroll in a computer science course. I mean, that's, how do we change that, right? How do, how do we, how do we change that number? I I was also reading and I couldn't believe that nearly two thirds of California high schools lack computer science courses. So how do we handle those challenges? How do we deal with that? How do we change those numbers? Yeah, that's actually, like, that's one of the things that I've been, I've I've been battling with because when I went to my school, it was the tech school, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, the computer science teacher left, you know, there's there's there could be high turnaround. And one of the things that I noticed that if you only have like one computer science teacher, if that person leaves, there's a gap that it's really hard to fill. And mm-hmm. so if if we can't recruit computer science experts into K-12 education, we need to you know, maybe go the other route and start working with teachers and getting them more comfortable with computer science because you don't need to be experts. I'm not an expert at computer science. I'm not an expert at programming. I'm not an expert at robotics, but I'm not scared of it. And I think that's something that needs to be embedded into K-12 education, especially when we talk about growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Growth mindset is saying like, well, I may not be able to do it right now, but I'm I could get there, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. So when I work with teachers, I'm, I'm thinking it's okay to ask for help, right? Ask your students. Trust me. Their perseverance will come through because you give them technology. You'll see. It's mm-hmm. it's how do we infuse growth mindset with these subjects that can be kind of scary for a lot of people? Yeah. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, we're, we're talking about misconceptions with our kids, but now we bring it to our teachers. And uh, Jeff has trained a lot of our teachers in um, the CSTEM program. And um, and you'll hear the teachers start and be like, I'm not a tech. I, I don't do tech or I don't do math. I don't get it. I don't do robots. And they come in and they're like, nope, I don't, nope. <laughs> and even them, they'll say it. But but within Ricardo, we saw them getting some of them getting trained over the summer within the day. They were so into it. They were. They didn't even remember their apprehension. They're so interested and excited about what they're doing, and they were accomplishing all all these things. And you saw that level of pride. Like I, I did. I solved that problem. I actually, I did it. And I did it correctly. And they get all excited. And these are our teachers. <laughs> you yeah. know. So that was um, seeing it with them. You're like, okay, wow. This gives us a little hope for our students too, because we're sure they feel the same way or even more so. And but you see, Ricardo had some video of some kinders you know, doing it and they're like, yes, you know, (laughs) just being able to do it. And they weren't scared at all. So, um, so yeah, very good conversation. So, um, let's, let's close up this question. So we did kind of talk about challenges. What kind of challenges are you seeing, um, Jeff, whether that's with 
students or its teachers or schools and what kind of challenges related to computer science have you been seeing? Um, dedicating um, actual time to teach computer science as like a standalone mm. subject. So one of the common things I hear from teachers, especially in um, like the K-6 group where they have a laundry list of things they have to go through, like they have certain minutes and all that other stuff. They literally have to like wheel and deal to put computer science in there. Like, oh, well, like I, I can't do this right now because I got to do these things. And there's all these mandates. And I, and I, and that coming from high school, I didn't realize that, that they were, they, they had these pressures mm -hmm. to literally like, like you have to do like X amount for this and X amount for that. So then they're thinking like, well, this is just another thing that I have to do. I, 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 I struggle with the fact that computer science is a tool. Mathematics is a tool. These are things that need to be done like across the board. And so this is where I think integration and integrated learning and project-based learning is so powerful is that the students are going, trying to solve a challenge mm -hmm. and they're using computer science to help solve it. And they're using mathematics to help solve it. And that kind of like thematic and, and, and project-based and problem-based and inquiry-based learning mm -hmm. can allow for computer science to get into those tight schedules that I know my teachers, because they're like, oh, this is great, but you know, I, I don't have time, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. like, like maybe, maybe we can create a thematic problem or a challenge where we have to write a report but then they also have to build a game on in computer science that will help help tutor another kid in it. And then while you're doing that, you're doing all the calculations and then you have a big report or something at the end. So like you mm -hmm. can get into standards throughout the, mm -hmm. the different subject matter and you can hit all the standards that we need to hit. But right. what you're doing is you're, you're having a commonality for the student so that it, it's the, like, it's more like real world. Like, it, like, in the workforce, you have this problem. Not only do you have to solve it. So, like for example, I'm an engineer. I got to solve this whatever the it, it, my my line isn't working to that 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 customer. But I also have to you know write a report about it, and then mm -hmm. I have to communicate. So like you have to use all these skills that we teach yeah. in isolation and education mm -hmm. in a holistic. And one of the huge things we hear from uh, community colleges and, and universities, the students don't know how to communicate. <laughs> right. And it's like, well, yeah, because we're like pigeonholing them and we're trying mm -hmm. to do everything in isolation. So like soft skills. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for to say that. <laughs> Those soft skills. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I don't know where so, I was going, but yeah. That's a, that's a, you know, that's a conversation we're always having. And, you know, for us, you know, it's, it's always also a matter of, you know, equity for our students and yeah. the misconception of, you know, I'm not good enough. I don't, I'm not smart enough for this or, or a gender reason mm -hmm. or also, you know, even, even race. And Ricardo, I think you have some stats on that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, again, Jeff, we were reading 60% of California students are black or Latin X, right? Or Native Americans, but only, they only represent 16% of students taking AP classes in, in uh, computer science. I mean, how do we change that? How, what can we do? You know, so that, 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 that linger in your mind. And we're going to go to that question in a moment. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, that's our thing, right? We're not just, we don't want to just talk about the problems. Like what, what can we do? What can we do? So let's continue. So let's go on to our next slide, Ricardo. We give us a little bit of a brain break right now. So here's more adorable pictures of our students <laughs> doing computer science, our littles, and, you know, some of our students presenting about what computer science is and how important it is um, to, to get into it at a young age. And, you know, um, so let's continue. And, oh, I think ooh, the next one, Hour of Code C-STEM. So those of you who are not familiar um, with C-STEM, you know, it, it is coding, it's robotics, but the, the thing that people don't realize is that it's actually tied in with math and our teachers, especially, well, I always represent elementary. I'm sorry, Ricardo, you could say all you want in other levels, but for our elementary, it's, it's tied into our actual math curriculum. So the students are practicing their math skills while coding and doing robotics. And sometimes they don't, well, not sometimes, a lot of the time, they don't even know they're doing the math skills while doing this coding, solving these problems in RoboBlockly. And all of a sudden they didn't realize they actually were practicing math the whole time, 
they, like, you, you kind of trick them <laughs> <laughs> into doing math. Um, but let's show a little bit about it. And then if Jeff wants to add a little bit more, because he is the expert there. So, um, and you know, uh, um, I don't think the video that we're going to show right now truly represents oh, yeah, we, Rugby, how we're doing it. This is more like we were doing our code, uh, Jeff, and you're going to be so <laughs> proud of some of the stuff our students and teachers were doing using Roboblock to create music, to create art. I mean, it was yeah. so amazing. So we are going to show so it. many videos, okay. Jeff, and you've seen them. This is, this is, this is <laughs> but nothing, this is just okay? really fun. Yeah, here it goes. Oh, is that Moana? <laughs> They're building snowmen in Roboblockly, I believe. So we also get to have fun with it. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot, lot more serious, serious videos. videos. Uh, Sorry, the sound. Go ahead. Oh, there you go. go. Ahead. We have a lot. And Jeff, you've seen our more serious videos, but that was one of our posts and just something really fun just to highlight some of the different things our kids were doing with, um, with our Rolo record. Blackley. So mm -hmm. Jeff, you can interject at any time and talk a little bit more about what it is. And oh, yeah. And with our so, questions. But, mm -hmm. So, oh, man, forbid that these kids actually have fun while they're learning, you know? Like, <laughs> Like I always felt like if 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 the teachers aren't having fun, it's gonna be hard for the kids not to have fun. <laughs> it, or right. it'll be hard for the kids to have fun, you know. And and when you look at some of those like drawings that they made, there's so much behind that 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 in order so think about like an essay that we write, you have to put it a outline, a rough draft, uh analysis, maybe you get feedback. That same process happens in computer science. And just making a snowman, you're talking about layers. What goes first? Mm -hmm. And then to do that, you have to learn what a radius is, right? <laughs> uh, one of the drawings was, what's chi? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, oh, no, oh, that's no. the C H I D. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, like the 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 amount of like thinking and processing that the kids do to to mm -hmm. make these little art masterpieces is fascinating. You know, and, and you said earlier, like tricking them to do math. But the thing is, it's it's using math for what it was, in my opinion, what it was supposed intended, to be there. Yeah. Cool. You know, <laughs> like math is there to help us make predictions or, you know, solve solutions. Um, and if we could get out of that abstract algorithmic way of kind of teaching math, you could say, well, maybe we can orchestrate in our class a moment where mathematics becomes necessary. And so then the kids actually ask for it. And then you're like, oh, what you're talking here about is, you know, a coordinate, you know? Exactly. And that's the example you were saying, you know, it, it wasn't important in isolation. Mm -hmm. So it, when it became important in context, then that's when the students got really into it. So definitely. And right. that's, and that's exactly what we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's continue on with our, okay. So I think you were already answering this automatically it just came kind of fluently. So uh, when we talked about the challenges and misconceptions, how can we counteract or remedy that? What are some ideas? What are the, that, what can be done? Model, have this, have people model it. Say, Hey, you know what? I may not know this, but that's okay. Let's go figure it out together. Like if, if you do that in your class, you know, you're, you're putting the onus on the kids and they'll start taking mm -hmm. ownership. Um, yes. You like it's, it, it stems to a growth mindset and, and it, it's okay. You know, the first year that I, I taught robotics, I didn't know anything about robots. I knew how to program, <laughs> but I didn't know anything about robotics. And so mm -hmm. like, there'd be times when the kids would ask like, yo, mister, how do I do this? And I'd be like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, let's go, you know? I was like, that's a great question, <laughs> you know, and, and, and embracing that and saying, you know, so like, it's almost like it's, 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 it's changing the pedagogical approach in your classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and it's trying to think about, well, maybe I'm not the, the, the person who has all the answers. Maybe I'm the person that can help us guide to figure out it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of like trying to embrace critical thinking there. Um, you know, so 
I think it's just like you got to get them exposed. Absolutely. One of the things. So like, if the kids aren't getting exposed to computer science, they are. It, it like almost scares me sometimes because I think mm-hmm. about the inequity in different yeah. districts in California, yes. where some schools districts or because they don't have a computer science teacher, the kids don't have any exposure. And then you look at uh, a different school district where they're doing robotics competitions with underwater thing, you know, and, and it's like. Or robotics in kindergarten. Yeah. (laughs) So the thing is, is it's, it's, we have to acknowledge that whether or not we have the, we have the resources to have computer science. Mm-hmm. Someone else does. And yes. and they are doing that. So like, if we don't actually actively try to introduce these concepts, mm-hmm. to our kids, we're doing a disservice to them because we're not preparing them for the future. Absolutely. So I, I hope, I hope people hear us loudly and clearly that this needs to be provided all over. This is not, you know, something that should be optional or look, be, look, beyond you know this is something that that is definitely it needs to level the playing field for our kids and they need to be able to be exposed to this and have these experiences and no matter where they go you know um and so i and ricardo was nodding and so was i because when we go in sometimes we'll go in and we'll do some demo system uh lessons and <laughs> i will tell you i will admit jeff there are times when we're they're like how do you do that and we're like um well, let's troubleshoot together. <laughs> let's debug or let's, you know, let's figure it out because half the time, you know, we don't know it right off the bat. And I think that's great for them to see. It's great for them to see that. And also, you know, uh, we talk about the different um, being represented. So maybe showing them people who are in this field who look like them, people in the field who are, you know, maybe female or or this certain, yeah. you know, ethnicity or race, you know, so, so very important to show them representation that, you know, this is possible for everybody. This is not just for this community. This is not just for this pocket of people. And there are people who look just like you out there in the world doing this. So if you love it, go for it, you know, and don't be afraid. And um, um, definitely that's, that was a big, big, Thing. So thank you, Jeff. That's yeah. yeah. And I think what he mentioned too, don't be scared to try it. The kit will lead you through it. Uh, I know Teresa and I were doing some Minecraft education uh, lessons and, you know, the teachers were really scared. They were like, I was scared. when you leave, <laughs> what are we going to do? And I'm like, do not worry about it. The kit will lead you through it. And, you know, when we asked the students, like, how many of you guys know how to do this? I was like, right. you know, and they were helping each other out. And it was just, it became <laughs> such a engaging lesson because, you know, they, they helped each other out. So don't be scared to, to try it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, mm-hmm. so our last question, dun, dun, dun. Um, what role does computer science play in the future and what does this mean for our kids? And we've been kind of sprinkling the answer in there. We've heard it through what you've said already, Jeff, but you know, specifically, what role does computer science play and what does this mean for our kids? Well, wow, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> computer science, it's, it's hard to define. Yes. And we, we kind of like debated that, you know, and, or we talked about it. <laughs> Um, it, it really, in my mind, it's the future. Like Mm -hmm. you have like computer science is so generic. It's like, it's such a big umbrella, but really we don't know what computer science is because we don't know what technology is going to be out in 10 years. So you can't really like define computer science. So computer science to me is, is, is inputs, outputs, information. How do we automation, like these basic things. And we don't know what technology is going to be for our students, which is why they need to be adaptable. Mm-hmm. So everyone always asks, like, first thing, like, yo, what what, what language do you teach? You know, and I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I've taught a lot of different languages. You know, mm-hmm. I've taught Microsoft Excel. You know, if you just do equal sign three plus five, something will happen. That's programming. Mm-hmm. Cool, right? So, like, it doesn't matter. But what we need is our our, our students to not be scared of it. Yes. And we need them to say, oh, I could do this. This is just like, you know, running C, C++, or this was just like how I had my robot do a square, or or that's how I did it. And, you know, I remember that when I used RStudio and data science and, or like, or, or when I was on RoboBlocky or whatever the language is. So like, we need to make it so that the students can just like take that leap of faith because they know, oh, I got this. And, and it's, it's me it's kind of like just exposure and the state california is doing some really cool things mm-hmm. we have right now it's um 
uh, I'm working probably with about 100 teachers in California working towards getting their supplementary authorization to get the computer science or the, 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 the authorization to teach computer science as a credential. And this isn't just people trying to teach AP computer science. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's teachers that are going to be introducing computer science at the lower levels. And I think that's something mm-hmm. that we need to kind of go. And in my mind, like computer science in the state of California and K-12 education has always been kind of like weird. And when I say weird, it's because like I was, a I got my math credential first because I just love math. And they're like, oh, you can teach computer science. I'm like, really? Why? Because like, <laughs> oh, you have a math credential. I was like, what? Like, okay. I mean, I'll take it. And then, I, and then I, I went down to the path of career tech ed and there's this whole umbrella and CTE mm-hmm. where you can teach computer science, but there was no like standalone. And mm-hmm. so like, how are we going to, how are we going to get computer science when we don't even have like a, an official credential for it? And so everyone's mm-hmm. just like, I mean, that guy can program or, or that, that guy's <laughs> good at computers. He fixed the printer <laughs> that guy teach, you know? So it's like, no, but like, honestly, like we have to like, we have to basically formalize it and, and make it so that it's taken seriously. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping and, and I, I'm predicting that that down the road, computer science will be a mandatory GE. Um, if not, wow. it, it, it needs to be. Um, because teaching the students, it, you got to think about it. We don't know what computer science will look like in 10 years. Right. Okay. So, like, you can't prepare them for whatever technology is coming out, but we can make them comfortable with technology. And so, like, we need them to be comfortable and not just being consumers. I'll go back to what Ricardo was saying. Like, we can't have them just really good at consuming. And, it, and, and that's not good for society. I mean, cons- we all consume technology and, and all that information that's accessible to us but if we're not providing the skills or the opportunities to develop skills to be the creators what at, at some point it's gonna the skills are gonna tip so or or the or the 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 gaps get bigger you know yes so, there so exactly like, or the mm-hmm. gap get bigger and then it's a oh, you know so yeah <laughs> Yeah, I am sorry. I'm, I'm I'm letting it go. And you know, those things that you said, those are the same things you talked to us about when we were talking to you before we had put the show together. And that's what sparked our fire. Spark that was it the light? Oh, I'm sorry. Got us excited. Bulb. The light bulb. There you go. <laughs> Spark the light bulb. Uh, turn on the light. Bulb. Anyways, I can go on and on uh, to the idea of actually having the show because that is a really good point that you know, computer science really should be a requirement. This is a, should, no one should leave high school without any with, without having some computer science knowledge. Exposure. And we, yeah, and we have heard our superintendent, Dr. Jimenez, say, you know, we are tasked with this um, difficult thing of of preparing our students for a future we don't know. We're preparing them for something we don't know. And I think you you reiterated that, you know, as we talk about the technologies. You know, we're trying our best. We just want to give them the tools to be able to adapt to it, you know, um, you know, because we don't know exactly what we're preparing them for. And Ricardo, I think you found some statistics too about, you know, why it's so important for us to to do this now and to make sure it's that all kids are experiencing this. Yeah, I think I shared that with you. Uh, but, you know, just looking into it right now, nearly one fourth of the country economic output is produced by high tech industries, mm-hmm. currently employing 17 million workers. So when we think about computer-related occupations, right, it's the fastest growing group out there. So, you know, that's where we're going. <laughs> and like you said, if we don't, if we don't help our kids, we are, it's a disservice to them. We're throwing them out there into the world. And, you know, anyway, so um, that was, that was our last question, wasn't it, Ricardo? I think that was it. Yes. That went by yeah. faster than I expected. I don't want you to go yet, but, um, <laughs> but I know, I know you are busy, busy. Uh, man, and I know you've been traveling and you're about to travel again. And so, um, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else you wanted to say to the world, um, to our viewers, to anybody um, before you, we, we, we let you go and continue on with our show today? <laughs> oh, just to all those educators, you guys are amazing. Just keep Aww. on doing. Um, 
I know that educators are underappreciated, underpaid, and first to blame, you know, but really, if you guys are listening, it's, it's the, probably the, in my opinion, the most important position in society. So oh, keep on keeping on. Thank you for saying that, Jeff. And we know we have a lot of educators who needed to hear that, especially one week before break in our district, <laughs> hanging right. on by a thread right now. So um, thank you so much again for taking your time. And we know that how, how difficult that was for you. So thank you. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your night. We're going to continue on with our show. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate you. Thank Bye, you everyone. so much. Jeff. We'll see you. Take care. Bye. <laughs> All right, so I'm um, just going to go ahead and go on his merry way, and we're going to continue on with our show because, as always, uh, we like to talk about – we're talking about science, computer science, and we want to share – and here it is. CS Ed Week is what we are celebrating this weekend. We've seen some great posts from a lot of schools all over with our students – um, showing that they are learning and experiencing computer science, which made us so proud. Um, so we're kind of going to go ahead and let you take over. Yeah, no, I just okay. uh, I put the uh, the link on the chat and this is the um, actually official website. And if you wanted to maybe find some ideas or learn more about it, we wanted to make sure that you had that site. Uh, we can kind of explore uh, the different opportunities of what you can do um, to, to bring this into your classroom if you wanted. Because as we mentioned, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't just be that specific computer class that should be doing computer science, right? Yes. We can all do it. We can all bring it into our content. And we wanted to make sure that we uh, show some ways of doing that. And we're going to just share some resources for you. Uh, uh, the first one we wanted to do, this is actually through Microsoft Make and Code. And it is actually completely free. So we'll, we'll just take you to see it really quick uh, uh, just to, to, to give you an idea um, I know we wanted to talk about um, Google also has something called welcome to see us first that is also free some great lessons in there some examples and materials already created for you so we want to make sure that you get that we will put those links in a second as we go into the, the different websites um, I know Teresa we've um, done scratch junior at our district uh, with our little ones and the iPads mm -hmm. right and we also have done scratch so we wanted to make sure that we share some of the resources that we have been able to use at our district right absolutely okay yeah. so as always that was a kind of an intro of things that we're just going to show you Ricardo are we going into actually do we have time we, we, we probably don't okay. have time today as I'm looking at the time but I wanted to mm -hmm. kind of share the at least the website so again this is okay. uh, completely free so I'm going to throw the uh, the making code from Microsoft into the chat for you if you wanted to check it out I love this I know we don't have time to do it the arcade is amazing when you can I was building uh, the Wakanda Forever game <laughs> about 20 <laughs> minutes ago but what I love is that you actually have have all of the instructions to build this so if i want to build my game right now uh it's going to go in there right now and the kids are going to build a game for uh the movie that you know it's out in the theaters right now and notice that oh my god immersive reader you know what can i say about immersive reader right yeah. when we talk about it right but it, it tells you um what you're going to be doing and what i love about using this is it actually is going to take you step by step so it, it will tell you exactly what to do so i from the scene right category mm -hmm. go to background so i will go in there and find it right uh, right. and do this and do this and so on and so on. We just follow along with the instructions, right? And just kind of follow exactly what they're telling me to do. And I will be able to build this complete game that I'm looking at what I'm building as I go through it right here. Just one of the little things that you can do with uh, make code inside of, um, let me go back, sorry. Wow. So, you know, it, teachers, if you're like, where do I make begin? Code. You know, I just, I don't have time. I don't have the skills to do this. You can literally, Ricardo just showed you, you can literally just give this to the students and they could follow the directions. And even for our emerging or struggling readers, we have immersive reader in there to guide them and help them. So, so you could do it. You can, and you can learn with them as well. So don't be afraid. And I think that's a big message today is don't be afraid of technology or computer science because our kids are ready to fly. Let's yeah. let them. And I know, I know we talk about our little ones when, when we start with block-based coding, right? And then as they're learning, they get to move into more advanced coding or language as uh, Jeff was talking about it. But just a great place with so many resources, with so many uh, lessons already built for you, uh, you know, as, as you get into the micro bits and then even coding inside of Minecraft. I don't know if you remember this, uh, uh, Teresa, but when we were learning how to use Minecraft and we we're like learning how to like make chickens fly everywhere. Long ago, yeah. Long right? Ago. But I mean, but you know, something, uh, uh, it's amazing. Uh, Minecraft came up with this amazing, 
amazing uh, 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 world that is called uh, for our code that is called uh, uh, Escape State as a lesson. And mm -hmm. I just want to show the video because it's so well done. Uh, for uh, for us to are, that are lucky enough to have uh, Minecraft education at our district, this will be something that you can start with, and the kids will have a great great time with it. So uh, is it okay if I play the video just really quick? Mm -hmm. yes. Let me go ahead and there, and let me go ahead and uh, open the, the the sound, and here it goes. Getting stuck can be scary. But with code, we can find a way to solve so many problems. Minecraft Hour of Code invites you to the Escape Estate for a new challenge. And I will let it play just because it's really good. Solve puzzles in each room using blocks or Python. Code your way out by dawn to earn a million emeralds and discover the power of computational thinking. Everyone's invited. Download Minecraft Education Edition and do an hour of code today. So if you wanted to find a place to start and if you are lucky enough to have Minecraft education, it's a great, great place to start, I think, right? Yeah. And, and I know uh, uh, we talked about our students, right? Some of them might be at the level of doing uh, uh, block coding. Some of them might be doing a different type of language. Mm -hmm. And like this will allow mm -hmm. them to do that, right? And this will allow yeah. them to do them. So that was just really simple. Uh, we also wanted to share um, some of the resources from Google. And I'm going to put this on the um, chat right now. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, here and again, uh, 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 CS First, uh, the curriculum is already built for you. You're going to be able to use a different type of language. Also, block uh, coding in here. Lessons are in here, so it's no experience is necessary. So you can just go ahead and get started. And you have a whole curriculum base uh, for every classroom. So everything is in here for you wow. already created and done if you wanted to do this, right? Yeah. So I, think I saw the cross curriculum. I see storytelling, game design, art. Right. So it's not just computer science. I can use this in, you know, my AP Spanish class where we're reading a particular story. Right. And I can have the mm -hmm. kids recreate that right in there if I wanted to. Right. Uh, I love it. Simple. Right. So yeah. that's one. Uh, we also have Scratch Junior and I'll let you talk a little bit about this one. If that's OK. Oh, sure. OK. So well, at least in our district, Scratch Junior, it's, a, it's an app. And so um, our kids, we even have our TK and K in there doing scratch, doing block coding in Scratch Junior. And what it really does, it just really simplifies the block coding um, for our little, little, littles to understand and to to see how when, when they do different things, it changes the sprite, it changes the character, it changes the way they move, where they go. And so it just very much simplifies the block coding. So you can see down there, um, the icons are big, you know, it's easy for them to maneuver. They learn how to um, put the pieces together, what fits, what doesn't fit, what works, what doesn't work. And they do have tasks as well. So um, they could see if they're successful at the task. And if not, they have to try it again, try it again, try it again. And so that's the whole thing about uh, with Scratch Junior. And um, so with Scratch, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I can't I'll go to Scratch. I'll go to Scratch too. Go ahead. Yeah, I tried that so too. Just to continue <laughs> on the conversation of Scratch, Scratch is in essence the same thing, but um, but it's not, it's, it's just, it's a little bit more intricate for our students who are ready to transition into to true block coding before they move on to the next language. And so Ricardo put the link in there. And um, again, there are lots of tasks in here. There are more options for them, more um, exercises for them to do, more missions for them to complete. So um, that was very broad, I know, but I think you have to kind of see it to understand it. And, and also it's very intuitive, very easy. And our kids, if you put them in there, they just get it. They they get how to troubleshoot and figure out their way into completing completing those tasks. So um, yeah, we do that with our elementary um, before they're ready to move on to the next part of coding. So uh, was that all? I think that was all. I think we wanted to dedicate our time to Jeff uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, joining us today and answer some of the questions that we had for him. And I we wanted to just touch on some of the resources that are out there for you. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to go into them, but this might become a series it where might. we can dedicate time <laughs> to each of them, right? Yeah, yeah, we like doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you so much, everyone. We hope you have a wonderful, um, what is it, CS Ed Week. 
And for those of you who are going on winter break soon, have a wonderful winter break. You will not see us again this year. But you know what? Ricardo, we, we might. We might pop on to say hi and to greet you, but I'm not sure. We'll think about it because this was supposed to be our last show of this year and for us to see you next year in 2023. But we might surprise you. Who knows? All happy right. Happy so holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs>